Okay, everybody, the next step in making our clicker game is going to be making a target. And we're going to make it clickable. Uh, hence the whole point of the game. So, we'll start by just quickly seeing what we got for our project so far. If I run it, we got our little intro screen, a start button. We start the game. We know that the mode has changed, but there's no game here yet. So, that's what we're going to build. We're going to build the target. And then we're going to build in some variables for keeping track of whether we hit the target or miss the target. And then we'll include some sort of, um, I guess, scoreboard and then a way to lose the game at the same time. So quite a few things to do. But they're pretty straightforward. So come with me to the game function. Remember our mode framework is basically, you know, if we're in the intro mode, then we're going to show the intro function. So we're in the game mode, we're going to use the game function just in our game tab. It keeps all these things separate. So let's draw an ellipse of some kind. I'll do a fairly strict, thick stroke, that is. Um, and you guys can make a better target than this one for sure. Uh, this will be good enough for demonstration purposes, however. Um, we'll make our ellipse and, oh, we want to make it movable. So I'm going to make it X and Y will be its coordinates. And then 100, 100 will be fine for a starting um, size. And this X and Y, I'm going to put that defined in the main tab up here. Um, our variable space here for global variables is going to get uh, pretty crowded. So I'm going to just make um, a bit of a comment here just to keep this straight. So this is the mode framework. Variables. And over here, this will be the uh, target variables. And we're going to need an X and a Y. So there's our declaring our variables, which makes that work. Of course, we need to tell the variables where to begin. So in the setup, might be a good idea to initialize the target. And I'll just set X to the center of the screen and Y to the center of the screen. You might think, oh, cool, I could just type in x is 400, y is 400, because I know the size of my screen, but it's a good idea to get into the habit of doing this for centering your um, anything, really. Uh, the reason is because these numbers will automatically update if you change your size. So if you try, your size changes for whatever reason, you don't have to go and update the rest of your code. It will just automatically update. Um, this is important because there's lots of apps that run on you know, say for example, phones, and you don't know exactly what the size of the screen is going to be. So you have to account for that in your code. So this is a excellent practice to get into. Okay, so let's see if it works. So let's see if we got a target in the first place. So go ahead and run that. Here it comes. Uh, yeah, there's a target, and I want to be able to click on it and see if I hit it or miss it. So that's the next step. So I guess that's going to go into game clicks. Game clicks is our function that is called from the mouse released function, that special built-in function in processing that checks to see if you have clicked and released the mouse. And because the mode will be game, uh, all the clicks will be handled by the game clicks function. And again, that's in the game tab to keep things organized. So under game clicks, we'll make um, just a simple if statement to see if we are clicking on the um, target and so we'll just have an using the distance function we'll check to see if the distance between the mouse pointer and the targets center is less than the radius and uh, I can see it's 100 here so I'm going to type in 50 you might be thinking hey you were just talking about making things general purpose uh, maybe I should make this into a variable as well and make this half that variable those are great ideas and I definitely uh, know that's going to come uh, later on to be a valuable thing, so you might want to start doing that right now. However, um, I'm not going to do it in this demonstration because it's, I'm going to leave it for you guys to, to think about and figure out how you might go about doing that. So, uh, anyways, we have our distance uh, to check to see if we're clicking on it. If we do click on it, well, I'm going to give myself some points and give myself uh, some extra points. So I'll say score equals score plus one. But it doesn't know what score is yet, so I better go make that variable. Uh, I guess I'll call it a target vari variable. Maybe this would be better to be game variables. 
I don't know. I'll just leave it as target. So I, I don't think that's really going to be a float. I'm not going to give half a point or something. So I'll call it score. And there's also going to be lives as well. So um, let's set those things up. Score always starts at zero in any game I've ever played. I think. Maybe maybe you start with scores that <laughs> decrease or something, but that's good. Oh, lives don't start at zero, though. That would be silly. Let's change it to three. Uh, so we have three lives when we begin the game. That's pretty classic. You can choose different values if you prefer. So back to game. Um, yeah, score is going to increase. And then what do we say if we miss the target? Well, we can say else. Um, lives equals lives minus one. So an if else statement basically will work so that if this statement is true, then this code will run. Um, but if this statement ends up evaluating to false, then the code in the else braces will run. So either this happens or this happens based on whether or not this is true. So if else, fantastic for choosing between two options. Uh, and I would like to go run this. I mean, I could go run it and we could click on things, but we're not going to see the value of the score. It won't be visible anywhere. So it's going to be important for us to go and uh, write that down somewhere. I'm not sure where we want to put it. I guess I'll put it here. Uh, so that way the target will be on top of the score. But I don't know if that's necessarily right or wrong. So you guys can make your choice. But I am going to use the text. Uh, function and I should just mention that I, I already have text align set to center center so the X and Y coordinates I provide the text function will be the center of the text and I'll stick that probably right in the center of the uh, screen not the very center but maybe the top center so I'll say something like text score and if I want the word score to appear I have to type it in quotes, but if I want the variable scores value to appear, I just type out score. And I can combine the two with a plus sign. That way, if I have 10 points, or at least the int 10 is stored in score, it'll print out as the word score, colon, space, and then 10, because it'll evaluate what the variable is. I'll include an x and y coordinate, so the x will be with divided by 2, so that I can center it, and then maybe I don't know, 50? I'm not too sure what would be good. I'll also do lives as well. Lives. With divided by 2 and 100. Let's see how that looks. I don't know how that'll look. Let's get this going on. We'll start. That's pretty good. It's nice up high on the screen. Maybe I'll just change it to be um, black might show up a little better or you know I'm not sure what the best color would be but we'll try that out yeah that shows up pretty nicely okay so now that I have a way to display my variables values I should be able to go and click on the target and according to the code that I wrote here um, you know if the distance is less than the radius then the score will be 1. So at what point is that true? Well, anywhere in the circle. So let's click on it. Hey, look, my score went up. Yes, anywhere around here looks good. But if I click on the outside, then the lives will go down by 1. And sure enough, look at that. They are going down by 1. They get to 0, though. <laughs> it's a little awkward. And I can keep going below. Lives don't really work that way in a video game. When you get to 0, that means something, right? That means the game is over. So we're going to add that last piece in here before we uh, finish the video. How do you make it so we switch to the game over mode when we get to zero lives? Well, that's just an if statement. And we can see if lives is, you know, at the moment when we decrease lives, we can then ask an if statement. We can say if lives equals zero, then we can set mode to game over. I think it's all caps. So that should work nicely. I'll just mention a couple things to watch out for. Remember that when you're comparing variables to see if its value is equal to another value, you use the double equal sign. And the single equal sign is used for assigning values. So they mean two different things. So watch out. You're using the right one. 
In an if statement, you're always going to use the double equal sign because you're checking to see if they are equal or not. Also, I'll just mention that I didn't use the braces here, and um, normally I would have formatted it like something like this. Um, oops, <laughs> there we go. But that's taking up quite a bit of space, and I'm getting a lot of braces inside braces here. It turns out for an if statement, if you have exactly one line of code that's in your braces, you can actually omit the braces. So I can just do this. And then to make it even cleaner, it's pretty short to put it all on one line. So I find that's a nice way. If that is the case, that you have exactly one line of code, then just put it all on one line. And it kind of reads like a sentence. So I don't know. I think it's a pretty good way to format things. Um, yeah, there you go. Let's see if it works. When I get to zero lives now, the moment it goes down to zero lives, it's going to check to see if that's the case, and it'll switch the mode to game over. I should probably see a red uh, screen based on what I have going on, I believe. Here we go. Start. Okay, so one, two, three. Yes, it went to game over. Okay. So there we go, that is our um, video. It basically, we went over how is it that you can make a target that knows whether it's being clicked or not clicked. Uh, we have that code here, and of course we have our scoreboard telling us what's up uh, with the scores we can monitor. And then of course, when we want to switch modes, we just assign the mode variable to a new value. And hey, we did it, we did it. Thanks everybody, I will stop the video. Next video we're gonna see how to move the target, which will be all sorts of fun. Bye.